Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the evening, the time to come together and just still our hearts and take a few moments and, and just look at, um, quiet our hearts and, and look at the book of Hebrews here as we start to look at the issues where the writer of Hebrews is exhorting um, his listeners uh, that they need to go on to maturity. And we would just appreciate the lessons being taught, understand what's being taught, and the importance of it. We do thank you for your love and for your grace. In your son's name, amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are in chapter 6. We actually finished chapter 5 the last time. So we'll pick it up in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. He says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we, do, we will do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteousness is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. We desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. So after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for the confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So in chapter uh, 7, verse 1, we're going to start to see about Melchizedek. And if you remember back in verse 5, he started to, in uh, 5, verse 10, he started to, to bring up this issue of Melchizedek and said, you know, we got some things to tell you, but we can't tell you because you're hard of hearing. And then, so he kind of interrupts himself, the writer does here. And, and, and remember 12, 13, and 14, he, he goes on, he says, you guys are babes. You, you need to be going on. You need to have your, your senses exercised uh, by reason of you so you can discern both good and evil. And they're, I don't want to say they're like the Corinthians where they, got, where they were carnal, but they got stuck. They, they, they knew maybe the basic principles, but they weren't going on. And it seems like some were even falling away. Now, I don't mean falling away like losing salvation, but maybe maybe not as concerned or they, they were saved, they were understood, that they understood what was happening. They said, okay, that, that's fine, and went on about their lives. Like, I mean, it happens, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to you know, remind you of 12, 13, and 14 that we need to be skillful in the word of righteousness. If you're not skillful in the word of righteousness, you're a babe. And it's not an insult. I mean, but it's not an insult unless you've been saved all your life yeah, and, you know, right. for a long time. It's okay to be a babe, but you need to go on to maturity. Mm -hmm. And if you're not in this book, that maturity will never happen. Um, you know, we see a lot of people that are out there and you, you hear it and maybe some of us have said it some, sometimes, you know, I wonder what God's trying to teach me or I wonder what God's doing or I think this or I think that with no reference to any scripture. It's just yeah. pie in the sky, yeah. our own opinion. You know, I mm -hmm. think God, in other words, if God were as righteous as me, this is what God would do. <laughs> so we should start chapter six saying, therefore, in light of that, in light of that, that, that I need to tell you guys about this Melchizedek, but you're not ready to handle it. He says, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let's go on to perfection. Okay, now he's not saying, hey, let's forget about Christ. 
He's saying those initial principles mm-hmm. that were laid down, we need to move on. Mm-hmm. Okay? You know, it, there's, a, there's a truism. You never want to get, that we talk about in, in grace circles and, and, and Christianity at large, you never want to get too far away from the cross. Right. Right? And, 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 and that is true. But when you study, you don't study in light of soul salvation every time you sit down to study the Word of God, right? Because you're never going to go on to maturity. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like building a house. I mean, you don't just stay on the foundation. That's right. right. You that's right. Build, build and, and, and that's a good analogy because that's the one Paul brings. He says, Paul's the wise builder. He's laid the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. If any man buildeth thereon. Well, what's, what are you building? You're not building those original yeah. doctrines, yeah. right? right? When, once you have the issue of, you know, really he lays it out. Once you have the issue of your justification and your eternal security settled, which is Romans 4 and 5, when you need to go on. From that point on, from Romans 5 on, Paul just makes some some passing references, if you will, to the issues of our salvation. Um, and of course, there's 1 Corinthians 15, there's Ephesians 2. But those doctrines are laid down in Romans. Then he builds on them. Okay, that's what the writer of Hebrews is telling them. These things have been laid down. Now, let's, let's go on. Now, the reason for that is to go on to perfection. And it doesn't mean, you know, they're never going to sin again. But they're going to have an understanding because there, there's, there's a time coming. There's some trouble coming, and you kind of see they've already got a taste of it. If you look down in verse, um, what verse did I see it in? No. They saw a taste of the uh, the wrath or something. Yeah, I was just. I, I, oh, come on. Oh, right there, yeah, verse 18. Look at the verse of end 18. We might have strong consolation who have fledged for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. So at the time Hebrews is written, we'll look this morning when we get down to that verse, they're on the run. They have fled looking for from ref, for refuge. So that they, the writer of Hebrews is, is, there's some expediency to what he's telling them. He's not saying, yeah, you know, the Lord could come in tomorrow or he could come in 2,000 years. He's saying, there's an issue, guys. We need to... Let's get on with the program because we're going to need to do that as we go through it. He says, go on to perfection, chapter 6, verse 1. And this is what he doesn't want to lay again. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, and on the laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Those are important doctrines. Right. Are those the principles of the doctrine of Christ? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They need to be settled in those things. The reason they they would go on is what? They were settled. Mm-hmm. Right? We don't spend, again, the same example, but we don't spend a lot of time in this room, where I assume everybody is saved, talking about how to get saved. Now, if there's new people in here, we do. Because we're saved. You know, we spent three years going through Romans 1, 2, 3, 4. It was kind of a little weird, because I'm thinking I'm teaching this to a room full of saved people, right? You know, theoretically. There are doctrines to, to go on to. We don't spend a lot of time talking about the very basics of right division. We don't teach the chart every week in here, right? We come back and talk about it from time to time because we understand that's how we look at, view the scriptures. So now we build on that. Okay, the writer of Hebrews is saying the same thing with these doctrines. I did want to look at some of these at these doctrines though because I think it's very interesting where we find these things. So if you would come with me to Matthew two. I'm sorry, Matthew 3. Matthew 3. Matthew 3 and verse 1. He says, In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Well, that's just what he said. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Now we're going to see that's what he's talking about here. For this is he that was spoken of the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his path straight. In other words, this is John the Baptist is the forerunner. 
-hmm. if, if they'll repent and change their ways from their dead works, what we're going to see in a second, and of faith towards God, that faith toward God is going to be manifested when they believe John. Because what's John say? There is the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. Right? He's the forerunner. He's the one that, to, to make straight, make the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Verse 4. The same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Okay, there's the doctrine of baptisms. You see, we're, we're getting all these things here. Okay? They should understand. It's been often said, you know, you don't see any record in the Scripture of anybody asking John, John, what are you doing? Right. The baptism was not a new thing. It goes all the way back to the Levites and Aaron. So, but, but that doctrine of that purification, they should, they should be fully versed in that by now. Verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Okay? Under, being repentant, getting baptized, confessing their sins, turning from their dead works that is how, is that's the issue of going through the wrath to come you see how the writer of hebrews is picking up on this on this passage right here bring verse 8 bring forth their fruits meat for repentance okay he's telling them you guys are full of dead works stop it and think not to say within yourselves we have abraham for our to our father for i say unto you that god is able of these stones to raise up children unto abraham don't rest in your identity with Abraham. Confess and turn your faith towards God. Okay, it's it's not your your lineage here that's the issue. It's your faith towards God manifested in His Son. Mm -hmm. Verse ten. Now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down, and cast into the fire. Over here he talked about the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment okay i indeed baptize with you water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than i whose sh shoes i am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire so just so we're clear there's three baptisms in this verse there's water baptism there's a baptism with the Holy Ghost, which is different than what we get, we get baptized by the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. not with the Holy Ghost. Okay, that we, we, we you see them baptized with the Holy Ghost is in early Acts, and with fire. The fire is not good. You know, people say, well, "I want to, I want all three baptisms." No, no you don't. <laughs> you don't want that baptism with fire. I mean, you know that because in verse ten he said those people that were not bringing forth good works right. are going to get cast in that fire. You're not going to survive that fire. Verse twelve whose fan is in his hand, he will truly purge his floor and gather his wheat in the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with what? Unquenchable fire. That's that faith toward God. So you see right there, we see repentance, faith toward God, baptisms, all on that one passage. Look with me, if you would, over at Luke 1. Luke 1 and verse 68. Now we've read this before many times. You guys are, I'm sure, very familiar with it. This is Zacharias has found out he's going to have a baby. This is John the Baptist's daddy. And he gives a, he gets filled with the Holy Ghost and he gives a pronouncement. And look what he says, verse 67. His father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath visited and redeemed his people hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be safe from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Now, you've got to understand the context here. They're under the hand of Rome. And Rome is a, are evil overlords. Yeah, they're not nice people. They don't go in. They, they assimilate you, but if you don't assimilate, 
they're going to correct your behavior, okay? Zacharias, full of the Holy Spirit, he says, when spot, speaking about John the Baptist, his son's role, he understands his son's going to prepare the way for God in the form of his son who's coming to redeem his people. There's that faith toward God. Don't put your faith in your dead works. Don't put your faith in being a son of Abraham. Put your faith in the Lord right there who's going to redeem us and, and deliver us from the hand of our enemies. Okay? Look over at John 5. Last thing we have there in, in, in uh, Hebrews is the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. He also talks about the laying on of hands. Of course, the laying on of hands, what's that going to be? That's going to be the healing. Mm -hmm. right? That, that right. healing program we see throughout Jesus and, 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 and the apostles do. Okay. Uh, John 5, what did I say? Verse 29. Oh, excuse me. Um, verse uh, 28. John 5, 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Some shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So when, when the, there's the, the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment you see there. So when the writer of Hebrews is saying, Let, you guys need to move on from these principles, what is he saying? You ever think about what he's saying there? We could have gone to Mark, and we didn't. We looked at Matthew, Luke, and John. That's where we find these doctrines. Mm -hmm. He's saying, you need to study Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which tells me that they had those books at that time. They were not written late. I mean, just let the internal evidence be. If he's talking about those doctrines, and, and, and think about it, Romans through Philemon, just think about how the Bible's laid out. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are clearly to the nation of Israel, right? Jesus said, I came not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, and then the book of Acts. And then you get Romans through Philemon, written by the apostle of the Gentiles, which are to the Gentiles, the church, the body of Christ. Okay, and then the very next book is Hebrews. So let's take Paul's epistles out. Now, please don't really do that, but mentally take Paul's epistles out of your book. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts 1 through 7, and then Hebrews. So when he tells them to move on from those doctrines, those doctrines are found where? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They need to study those and then go to Hebrews to Revelation yeah. to move on. That's how they're going to move on. They're going to understand Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. And then with those doctrines in mind, firmly settled in their mind, then they're going to move on to what they need to know to get through the tribulation. Hebrews through Revelation. Mark through John, or Matthew through John is going to prepare, prepare them. All those things that the Lord Jesus Christ told them. That's the kind of the, the constitution or gives them a, a taste of what kingdom life's going to be. And then Hebrews for Revelation, with that in mind, is going to prepare them and allow them to build on those doctrines to go through the tribulation in the way they're supposed to. He says there's something very interesting, too. If you're in back in Hebrews, look at chapter 3, verse 6. Ch chapter 6, verse 3. I guess. You go ahead. One's red, one's black. I think this is such an interesting verse. So, we need to leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ, of all those doctrines, and this we will we do if God permit. So they will go on and move on from those doctrines if God permit. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Why would the writer of Hebrew write all scriptures inspired by the Holy Spirit? So why would the writer of Hebrews, or the, the, the Holy Spirit, through the pen of the writer of Hebrews, tell them that the day, to, to move on, to go on, to grow, and then say, and we'll, we will grow, but only if God permits. If they have enough time. That's it. If they have enough time. It's exactly a time issue. Look over at Mark 13. Mark. Mark. So for all those people that say grace believers, grace teachers, don't use anything but Paul's epistles, we have hit four, all four Gospels in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, Mark 13 and verse 20. Um, let's actually back up to verse 14. 
But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Let, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him that is on the housetop not go down to the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. Let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction such as not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time neither shall be. And don't forget, in verse 19, there's been a flood. Yeah. I know. I know. Okay, so Jesus is telling him, you know, when you see that thing, you just you, it's time to get out of town. Time to get out of Dodge. And, but look at verse 20. Except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen... He hath shortened the days. Then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Take heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. If, it, exactly. If God permit, when when he says if God permit, if the, if the, if God doesn't shorten the days to the point where they can't do it. Now look what he says too here though about the false Christ and the false prophets, and what are they going to do? Sign, should they show signs and wonders to seduce even the very elect, right? That's why they need to be grounded in those principles, the laying on of hands, of baptisms, of repentance, of judgments, because they're going to see stuff. It's going to look like what they would expect to see. It's going to look like something God should be would be doing, but they're going to understand, whoa, 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 no, no, no. Jesus Christ already came. Jesus Christ already did that. That guy over there, remember, it starts off with the abomination of desolations. This passage did. <coughs> Excuse me. When the Antichrist stands up and says, I'm your Messiah, here I am, it's going to look like it. But they're going to have to say, wait, 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 wait. Jesus Christ already been died. Jesus Christ already came in the flesh. That's why if we ever get over the, to John's letters, he says, you know, anybody that says Jesus hasn't come in the flesh is a liar. There's a point there. That guy is not Jesus in the flesh. Jesus in the flesh already came. So that can't be him. Right. So they're going to have to understand these doctrines of Matthew, right. Mark, Luke, and John. They're going to have to be settled in them. Because they're going to see things. And yeah, there will be time to study and to compare what they see. But they're going to have to make some snap decisions at some point too. Well, that's why he may claim to be Christ, but only... The Lord Jesus Christ actually fulfilled every single um, prophecy. Well, right, and that's how they can know that that Jesus was the real Christ, not this new one they'll see out in the right. future, because He won't be doing every prophecy. And see, and what we will, what we'll see as we go on, the Antichrist is going to die and get resurrected. Okay, Jesus Christ died and got resurrected. There, the people should have said that you know, no, that Jesus already did that. Right. Jesus already healed. He's going to re-implement the um, sacrifices. We're going to see, he says, the blood of bold and goats never could. They're going to have to understand that looks right, but the final payment for sin has already been paid. Right. We shouldn't be doing that. That is wrong. Well, the only way you understand that is if you understand what Jesus was teaching this group mm -hmm. for four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're expected to do it. They're going to be in trouble with those people. Exactly, exactly. They're going to be in trouble, and there's going to they're they're going to have to understand. That's why he tells them. He he doesn't tell them, you know. Get together, have a Bible study, and see if that's it or not. He says, when you see that, go. Yeah. He didn't say call the elders together and let's have a meeting about it. Well, let's discuss yeah. it at Wednesday night Bible study. He out. says, you see it, go. Now, how can you do that? Why would you? Why would you? Ha why would you be able to see something, and that, and instead of having to go and consult your priest or consult your Bible study leader to say, "I see that I need to go," because you know God's word, right? Because you've what had your senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see how the the book of Hebrews is not just a Pollyannish book with some nice metaphysical things for us to apply in the day that we live. It's got some real world lessons to teach a group of people that's going through the tribulation. 
when they hear about other Christ, they say, no, Christ already came. I've already, I've, I've been down this path. I've seen that before. Don't fool me once. Don't, you know, don't, don't fool me twice. That type of thing. So that's the issue there. Of if if God permit, well, the only reason God wouldn't permit is if He cuts the time short. It's not like He's going to say, okay, you don't get to learn. That, that that's not what that's not what's being said there. Okay, so going going back to. Uh, Go back to Hebrews. Verse 4, 5, and 6 here. Those three verses are what made me put my Bible away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A long time. What if somebody told you that that wasn't about you? How would that, how would that have changed? How would that wow. have changed? Oh, it would have completely changed my... So think about what think about what Dorothy just said. Now let's, I'm going to read verse four, five, and six, okay. and think about that as if it is written to you. Okay, it's terrifying. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift, were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. I know exactly what Dorothy's feeling. You know, I didn't know these verses existed when I thought I'd blaspheme the Holy Spirit, but this was the attitude that I had. I knew I was saved, and now I'd blasphemed, and now I'd lost, and so I'd lost it. Now what? Oh, you, that, oh yeah, I was paralyzed. Right. There. You, do you see how if you take these verses and make them about you, and now the verses mean what they say. Let, let's right. let's start yes, there. The right. verses mean exactly what they say. Right. They're just not to and about us, right. the Church, the Body of Christ today. This, these verses do not apply to us today. We'll be very clear about that. That's why we spend so much time in yeah, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. This is book written to a bunch of people that are going to go through the tribulation in, in, the, in the ages to come. And there's some issues here, though. So let, let, let's go through this. It's impossible for those who were once enlightened, have tasted of the heavenly gift, were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Okay, what, When were the people... When did they get enlightened, taste the heavenly gift, and when were they made partakers of the Holy Ghost? Pentecost. At Pentecost, right? At Pentecost. At Pentecost. At Pentecost. Okay. At Pentecost. And tasted, uh, and tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come. Okay, the powers of the world to come. That's the kingdom. Okay. The, the, so the, now the what? The 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 earthly kingdom, that okay. the millennial kingdom. Okay. Now. The powers of the world to come. The healing. The driving out the devils. The things like that. Okay, didn't Jesus Christ do those things? Uh -huh. Didn't yeah. the apostles do those things? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, they've tasted it. They've got that. Hey, look, at everything that Jesus and the apostles did was a foretaste of the coming kingdom. Jesus, Jesus gave them a taste of what that kingdom was going to be like. We've said many times, when people got healed, the, the individual that got healed, um, no doubt, was very happy. But the point was not necessarily to make that person happy. The point was to teach a lesson. Okay? Jesus heals the, the, the man that can't stretch out his hands withered. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, if the kingdom is at hand and your hand is withered, what's the problem? You can't get it. You can't reach. You can't, right? If, you, if this is at hand, my hands, I can't get it. He's showing the ignorance, the darkness that's in Israel. He heals them, and they can grab onto the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, Th things things of that nature. Things of that nature. It's a taste of the kingdom when there the healing happens. Now, the thing, when the healing happens, mm -hmm. that's in accord with the Abrahamic covenant, right? He's he's going to take away all those things. He's gonna, and and with the new covenant, he's going he's going to bless them. So when they've tasted those things and they fall away. They can't be restored. Now, we want to be clear here too about this. This is not where somebody does a, makes a sin, and now okay, that's it. Okay, when, it's a falling away. Right. It's a rejecting the Holy Spirit. It's taking the mark of the beast. It's saying, it's saying Jesus has not come in the flesh. That's the Messiah. Okay. Oh. Let, let, let's not confuse this with somebody speeding. <clears throat> Or, or even adultery or things like that. This is a falling away. This is just, this is this is not that they have to be perfect without sin. 
It is, it is not, not anything to do with, with that. This is truly a falling away. And we're going to look at a picture of this. If you would, come with me to Acts 5. Oh, I ever thought that was okay. You got saved and then you, you didn't follow through and... And then there's no hope at the end of verse 6. Like, well, you didn't have a good, good respect for God, so you can't have God. That's, a, that's what I got out of those three verses, and I was done. And that's what you should have got out of those verses if you didn't rightly divide. And if, if you're told every book, if you've told, you're told every verse in the Bible is yours, and every promise in the Bible is yours, and everything and every curse in the Bible is yours, that's the response you should have had. But see, when you rightly divide, though, that's why you've heard us say it many times, we don't rightly divide so that we're the smartest people in the room or so that we have a great theological system or so that we can draw the chart on the board. We rightly divide to take the confusion away right. so that you can get out of that book, this book, the Bible, what God wants you to get out of it and not get have this confusion that wrecks people's faith. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you close your Bible and you put it away. Understandable. Yeah. I like the vision. I remember uh, Charles uh, Stanley. Stanley. Uh, now, as knowledgeable as he is of the scriptures, and he's uh, and he's very committed. I mean, he's a he, he practices what he what he believes, but very strict. But uh, I remember one day as I was listening to him, he was preaching on the things that people, the scriptures that people say. Well, this says you lose your salvation. Well, he, he dealt with this very scripture. He said, I can't tell you what it means, but I can tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean you lose your mm. salvation. But he couldn't because of not understanding right to be. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because Interesting. it does say you can lose your salvation. It says it, but, it, but, it, but let's be clear. I want to be clear again. This is not an issue where you just sin you're you're just such a sinful terrible person that you don't make it okay there's it's the issue of falling away when you fall away that's an act that you do you make a choice to step away mm -hmm. you understand all these things that he, the doctrines of Christ and you reject them right okay think about what these people have done before we were over and all they've they've been enlightened so they've had understanding Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost has enlightened them. They've tasted of the heavenly gift. Were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost come upon them. They've tasted the good word of God. And the powers of the world to come. The healing, the driving out devils, all those things. Okay, so the, they've been there. They've been part of that. Think about why they received the Holy Spirit. They were saved. Because they were saved. They weren't saved, but they did the, they, they did the baptism or did whatever they needed to. Okay. They weren't saved. It's interesting because if they were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and then how can they fall away? I don't know. See what I'm saying? Now we're going to look at a couple here in just a minute, and and, and you'll 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 see how this works out. Okay. But this is an they have said the the people that he's talking about. If you fall away, if you go after that antichrist, you you, were never, you, you can't be restored yeah. because you've crucified Jesus again. Now why have you done it? Well, you crucified him once, not you personally, but the nation crucified him once when they crucified him. If, if, if now somebody else stands up and says, I'm Jesus Christ, you've crucified him allegorically again. Okay? So they, if they shall fall away, that is an act that they're going to do, that they're going to do. It is impossible, if they shall fall away, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. Are we looking at something that's going to be future now? Yes. This kind of stuff's going to happen to the people. Yes. Well, they're going to... They're they gonna, won't be here at that time, though. No, but, yeah, but, they'll, but there's still people there that... Right. Sure. That, that, experience that are saved, that, that, that think they're saved, but they're not really saved. They're going to go through this. Look at, over in John, he talks about, they were of you, and if they stayed with you, they were of you, but because but the evidence that they weren't of you is because they left. So that means they were never... That's a, they were never that's really a high saved. standard. That, that's, that's, that's a tough standard. Okay, now, yeah, it is something that's going to happen in the future. You won't be here. Glenn's right about that. The the most obvious one to talk about is people are doing this. They sell what they have. They're they're out in the hills. They they understand it, and it just becomes too much. 
Well, they're doing the and they go the down and they take the mark of the beast. Right. So that's yeah. That's one of the things it can be. They could just follow the Antichrist. They could say, you know, I don't, I don't think Jesus did come in the flesh. I don't think the Messiah did come in the flesh. No, no, he didn't. So now they're going to follow the Antichrist because he's going to look like that. Well, a lot of the Jews of today that are living now maybe don't believe any of this. This is what we believe about <coughs> Jesus. Oh, they don't. Yeah, you can Google it now and you'll see you, you, the thing, same things that have been said in Paul's day. First of all, the, the, the Jews that reject Jesus as their Messiah, mm-hmm. okay, they reject Paul. They think Paul's the biggest heretic ever. They deny that Isaiah 53 is about the Lord Jesus Christ. They think it's about Israel. Yeah, I mean, so yes, the, 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 there are Jews today that completely reject, and that will be the same attitude out there. But these are people that the writer of Hebrews is talking about that were part of the group for a while. And then they left the group. But they didn't have true, true belief in God. They didn't, what, endure to, to the, the end. end. Well, now, once the body of Christ taken out, we go back. They go back under the law. Yes. Okay. So now, uh, John the Baptist was preaching. Or say, like Peter, repent and be baptized. Mm-hmm. So they will be going through that same yes. thing there. Okay. Now, once they have repented and are baptized, is it, is it possible then for them to fall away? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So they, because they have no ceiling like what we have. Right. So then, really, until they get into the, you know, like in uh, what uh, Acts chapter three verse nineteen and whatever, uh, be, repent, and be baptized, that your sins be blotted out at the day of refreshing. When so that, the times yeah. of refreshing. So at that point, then they're they're sealed. They can't lose it. Then. At the time, once the kingdom, at once, once they've gone, because now the tribulation's over. Yeah. The tribulation is where they get tried. Mm-hmm. True Israel will come out on the other side and go into the kingdom. At that point, God's going to write his heart, His law in their hearts. They will do it. They won't teach each other anymore because they already know it. They won't sin, not because it's impossible for them to sin. They won't have any desire to sin. They will always do what's right because that's within their heart. Okay. And that's such a good point because you look at the doctrine of the Jews. There is nothing that talks about that they are sealed by the Holy Spirit Think about da- Think so, about David's prayer in Psalm 51. They got to endure to the end to actually get it to be sealed, almost. Like. Right, right. Think about. Th- let me ask you this. Let me get. To, let me you know, hold this and let's just think this one through because it's, it's very interesting. Because I know it. I, people in this room. There's only four of us in this room, and three of you guys have kind of looked at me like, "Well, you're kind of crazy, Dave." But let me show you something. Let me show you something. Get um, get Acts two and Galatians two. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, Acts 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and all filled, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire it sat upon each of them they were all filled with the holy ghost there's the heavenly gift and there's the holy ghost that we just talked about began to speak with other tongues there's a sign of the kingdom as the spirit gave them utterance and they were dwelling at jerusalem and so on so there's the holy spirit that comes down on them right okay look at verse 14 but peter so peter's there standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of judea and all you that dwell at jerusalem to this be known unto you and hearken to my words for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing as but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit. They shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth below. And, and, and so on. Okay? Verse 21, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What I want you to see here is the Holy Ghost has come down and Peter is filled with the Holy Ghost. Right? Everybody in that room got filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke in tongues, including Peter. Mm-hmm. Okay, with that in mind, 
Come with me to Galatians 2. And we're going to look at an event that happens 15 years later. Uh, verse 11. Galatians 2, verse 11. When Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face, because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. When I saw that they walked up uprightly, according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if thou, being a Jew, livest as the man of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? And so on. What I want you to see is, okay, he gets filled with the Holy Spirit. Fifteen years later, he and Paul have a problem. And Peter's wrong. Or Paul's wrong, for that matter. But I'm going to say Paul's right here. Okay. Right. See, you see, they can still reject the counsel of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit didn't control Peter for the rest of his life once he filled him. Right. Okay. Now, it, so they're not sealed. I mean, now that's the same thing with with us. We get saved, we receive the Holy Spirit, and we can still grieve the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, at least we're sealed. As far but as we're salvation. sealed. We're, yeah. we're we're sealed. The times of refreshing. Now, granted, Peter's right. I mean, Jesus already told Peter that that he's righteous. Okay. But what I'm trying to get at is this little flock is not controlled every thought and deed by the Holy Ghost. Okay. Fifteen years later here, Peter's in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Why didn't the Holy Spirit just come and zap Peter? Right. Because that wasn't the program. Okay? So in, in let now, in like manner, people can receive get get baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, and then go and take the mark of the beast. Oh. If that weren't the case, why would the writer why would the writers of Hebrews who through Revelation make such a big deal about taking the mark of the beast and falling right. away and, and all those things? Right. Because it's possible. Right. Why would John talk about well they were of you but they're not of you because they left if it wasn't possible? Don't forget what Jesus said. It's going to be a terrible time. Right. It's going to confuse and trick and deceive the very elect. And so that really puts the emphasis on the study to know <laughs> you'll be able to stand because That's right. Right. when you get decision to make and you waver, then you're in trouble. Right. Don't forget, it's in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews four twelve, where we find out the, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two edged sword. Mm -hmm. We just found out at the end of Romans, uh, Hebrews five, excuse me, Hebrews five, about not being a babe but being mature, and having your senses exercised to discern good and evil. Now, Paul doesn't use that term. It's a, I, th I love that phrase. You guys are using... I mean, that's a great way to make, get mature. But it's going to mean something to these people because on a daily basis, their senses are going to get exercised. Their senses are going to get exercised. Well, see, it, well their, their uh, problems, their wiles are earthly. And that's why they're looking for a physical... Uh, you know, man of perdition, and it's all physical, but we're told to stand as well, that our battle is spiritual. Right. Because we're going to be in a spiritual realm. They're, right. And yeah. th their battle is also spiritual, but it's going to be physical. Physical, right. They're going to, because they're expecting, they're not expecting to go to heaven, you're exactly right. Yeah. They're expecting that kingdom. They're expecting to Jesus, they're expecting their, their Messiah to stand in the temple and say, I'm here. Mm-hmm. He's going to do it. He's going to die. He's going to get resurrected. He's going to do it. He's going to have made peace. The Bible says the Messiah is going to be Prince of Peace. It, it, yeah. They're going to... Well, just this matters. My point is we both have wiles. We, we both have um, struggles. Ours is just spiritual, and we're told how to stand in Ephesians 6. Theirs is going to be physical, and they're told how to stand too. Exactly. In Hebrews through Revelation. Exactly. Yeah. So let me, let me show you what it looks like when this happens when that when people fall away look at acts uh five you guys know the story acts five verse one but a certain man named ananias with sapphira his wife sold a possession kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Okay, so now it doesn't say it, but can we, is it, is it a reasonable expectation or a reasonable assumption that they're part of this group? Yeah. 
Yeah, or they want to, or or, or they want to be. I mean, right. they've gone gone on the rest of Right. I mean, yeah. if if you look back to, um, but not wholeheartedly. Yeah. Look. Keep your hand there. Look back at chapter two, verse forty-one. Um, uh, 41 and they that gladly received his word that's Peter's word were baptized and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine that's what we read about in Hebrews and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul many wonders and signs were done by the apostles all that believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added the church daily such as should be saved what I want you to see you see the, that group's already sold their possessions right so here Ananias and Sapphira for some reason have decided to sold their possession I don't think it's an unreasonable expectation to think they were part of that group or wanted to be part of that group the word saved is here uh huh but if they can be lost, then they're not saved. Okay, but not all... Right, but but the, the, only the people that get saved are the ones that believe. Well, Which are 3,000. they're counting people, how do they know who's who? Well, the Holy Ghost knows. Oh. Okay. Okay, I'll let that go. I'll let, that'll have to be my, my cop-out answer. The writer, the Luke, doesn't know no, for sure, but the Holy, Spirit, well, yeah. the Holy Spirit certainly would. Okay. So now you got Ananias and Sapphira. Now they've sold this possession. Okay, verse 3. Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? After it sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Ananias, hurrying his words, fell down, gave up the ghost. Great fear came on all them that heard these things. Why did great fear come upon them? They didn't want to die. Right. They understood what was about to be taught in Hebrews. These, they fell away. They had tasted of the mm. of, of the thing, and they made a decision to follow. They made a decision. The, the, from what I can tell, when I read this account, and we'll keep going, but it, to me, the big issue is not the not the hide not the hiding of the money. It's the lying. Yeah. Well, you know, well, that's that, what the, Peter said. the fear that they would have. I mean, I could. Especially, if, if, but like um, um, Marge. Marge, yes. I, I hope, hope I did not, though she was in fear. Hope right. She did not. Yeah, that's right. So, so people would have seen this and said, wow, okay. So keep going. The idea of just the fear there. When they see two people die because, I mean, this is, this is a serious thing. It is serious, right. And, right. and like that. Yeah. yeah. Verse 6, the young man arose, wound him up, carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. It's amazing to me that after three hours, she didn't know. You'd think somebody, even when she walked in the building, you would have said, somebody said, you know, <laughs> here's a little heads up. <laughs> and oh. Peter, Peter answered unto her, maybe she wasn't popular. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straight away at his feet, yielded up the ghost. The young men came in, found her dead, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostle were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Um, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. The rest there's no man joined himself to them. But the people magnified them, and believers were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of men and women. So the thing I want to say, and this also addresses your issue, it's the believers that got saved. Uh -huh. The true believers that got saved, just like you see here. Now, there's a little uh, issue here, too. Um, verse 13, yeah. and the rest durst no man join himself to them. No, there was, there was nobody who was double-minded at this point that saw that, that wanted to join the, the apostles. They saw Ananias and Sapphira join the apostles, and weren't true about it and that's what happened see peter and james and john they're not looking for the lukewarm people right right they're looking for the people that are in right okay ananias and sapphira apparently 
Yeah, they were hedging their bets. Yeah, keeping back some. The Messiah, this Messiah thing is going to work. I, I like that idea, but just in case it's wrong, I'll give you to keep a little something here for my emergency fund. But that shows they really never had faith. It does show they never had yeah. faith, and it's so right. interesting to me is they were actually right because it didn't happen. It didn't happen in seven years. <laughs> But nobody knew. But they didn't put their faith. Mm -hmm. Why did Paul take... Who did Paul take up a collection for? The, the poor, poor saints, saints in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Why were they poor? They'd they run out. So they had the... They'd faith. run out. Right. So the only reason I want... We're, we're done now. But I, the only reason I want to go look at Ananias and Spira, that's an example of people that had tasted the Holy oh. Spirit, tasted the things that had come, and fallen away. Now, you can see they can't get... Re these two can't get... Restored, can they? Yeah, Why? Because they're dead. Right. But even if they weren't dead, they can't be restored. I mean, these people back here that... Well... But, you know, that just makes me seem so grateful again for what the Lord Jesus Christ has done and how we are sealed. Let me, let me, let me just say one thing, though, about what Dorothy just said. She said, even if they hadn't died, they couldn't be restored. Yes and no. If... God doesn't raise up Saul, the Apostle Paul, then what you just said is true. But because he did raise up Saul, the Apostle Paul, if they had lived, they could have got saved according to Paul's program. Not gone into the little flock, but they could have become a member of the Church of the Body of Christ just like Paul did. Yes. Exactly. Right. They, right. Exactly. They could. They at this point they had blasphemed the Holy Spirit. This is their. This is their individual blasphemy of the Holy Spirit right here. Okay. So there's no more chance for repentance. And because the, because the dispensation of grace hadn't happened yet, right? Wrath Bam. Came. The wrath came. Okay. Immediately. If God hadn't killed them, if he cut off their foot, I don't know, given them leprosy, whatever, and they had made it to Paul and heard Paul's message and said, "Wow, I think Paul's right. I, I agree with Paul." They would have got saved and put in the church body of Christ forever. Well, a lot of the, a lot of the Jews that uh, Paul preached to, they was the same deal with them. Yeah. They, were, they had missed it. I'm going to yeah. yeah, I'm going to agree with you, but I'm going to change the word. Not most, all. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Paul Jews, never yeah. taught the gospel of the kingdom. He only taught the gospel of the grace of God. When he goes, when he's there in Damascus, when he first gets started, he's preaching the gospel of the grace of God. When he goes into the synagogues That's first, he synagogues. he's preaching the gospel of the grace of God. He's not Lord. preaching yeah. and get them into the little flock. Right. So, 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 Dorothy, I, I, what I, the only thing I'm saying, if if the chart never opens up, if we never had the dispensation of grace, then they could never have been saved. Now, I mean, they can say they they died, but if they had lived. They could have got saved if they had respond, would have responded positively to the Apostle Paul's message in the dispensation of grace. Was here and when grace was going on, but if, they, if, if when this happens, right. Jesus has taken the church out, there's no possibility. Right, exactly. If, if they had gone right into Hebrews here, right. the Ananias and Fire would have right. no chance. Excuse me, would have had no but they chance. they didn't endure to the end. Right, they did and not. They did, not, they did yes. not endure to the end. Right. They didn't have the faith. They hadn't had their senses exercised. Hey, they hey they liked the healing. They liked having all things in common. They liked the tongues. They liked being filled with the Holy Spirit. Like our there you go. They, they liked all that stuff. Hey, that this is this is good. Think about the Jesus talks about the uh, the parable, the the seeds, right? Mm -hmm. There's seeds that fall in different places. The only ones that stick are the ones that go to good soil, right? Right, all the other ones, the birds come, the wind comes, others, they, they, they really didn't the, the, the weeds, they, they, they start to take root, and then what happens when well, the cares of the world come? That's Ananias and Sapphira. And don't forget, when those people, the, the people that are using Hebrews, and it applies to them, they're going through the tribulation, the cares of the world are going to be big. I know. Jesus has already told them, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and your Father will provide you for all the cares of the world. My, my paraphrase. The cares of the world are going to be real. Well, that's why their proof of their faith is going to be in getting to the end. Right. <laughs> you know. But when if we want to eat, we go get a job. They're not going to yeah, get a job. Yeah. They're going to need to say that prayer and have it, their faith in it. Right. They're not going to be able. They can't do what Ananias and Sapphira did. Put a little something, something on the side, because what's so foolish about this too is that money wouldn't help them anyhow. Because if they don't take the mark of the beast, their money's not going to wouldn't have been any good. And you can see things like that even now kind of setting up for stuff like that because 
so many things are electronic now, and you got your tap visa, and you, you know, it's not even yeah, but that's not something we have to worry about. Well, it's not something we have to worry yeah, about. Yeah, but oh yeah, you I can mean, see it. You, you know, can see how things are opening you know, up yeah. for Pe- currencies. And people stuff. always said that. People said the social security card yeah, was going to yeah. be the mark of the beast. That was your credit card, right? And then it was tattoos, and it, you know what? Now it's the shot. Now it's now, now, the COVID nineteen shot, right? The jab, um, <laughs> you know. But again, and I know we're often fun with it. None of us think that. But right, the vision care, just clears that right up. You can completely dismiss that, right? Through right division, understand? Hey, that, that's got no part of us, and and just and just rest in that. And that's what's nice. You're able to rest because you know you're not going to go through the wrath. Nor do you think you can ever lose your salvation or lose the Holy Spirit. That's right. Because people today, and Paul's very clear about this in Timothy, people today can say, I'm done. I don't want to be a Christian anymore. Too bad. Guess you what? To you're going to have eternity, yeah. and you, you're going to be miserable for eternity in heaven. <laughs> 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 right? Right. Better to be miserable in heaven than happy in hell, right? <laughs> well, we're knit together. We're members one of another, and you can't get out of that. Yeah, exactly. But you're, you're members of the, of the church body of Christ. Well, right division. Now, I've, uh, I had an uncle that uh, he, he preached on Bible prophecy. We, he started way back years ago. And the fact that he taught things that then uh, people didn't accept, then later on, the other Bible prophecies are teaching that very thing. But you know, most all of that is just it's a wasted effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's right division. And you go with what, I mean, most of them, I think they're, they're actually, they think they're talking about the rapture, but they're actually mixing it with the day of the Lord and all that. Okay. Oh, yeah. And so, but, but all that they're talking about, it's not going to happen until after we're gone anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's for all the prophecies. Yeah, it's so interesting how people mistake the day of the Lord with the day of Christ because they're just they're in the different titles and it's just interesting. I think that they put it all together. When when the nation of Israel fell and salvation gave the Gentiles through the fall of Israel, from that day forward there's no prophecies that had relates to us in any way. Yeah. When, right. When the body of Christ was taken out, then back at that point the prophecies pick back up and you mm-hmm. going through. So all of the, the people that I'm talking about um, mean nothing. I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. I think you have a good lesson. I want to uh, see if I can find it. You trying to find something? Yeah, I'm trying to find something here real quick. It would have been different. We would have adjusted it. Anyhow, Saul, uh, how, how can you get the spirit and then lose the spirit? Okay, King Saul. Oh, King Saul. Okay, King Saul. Saul Samuel, and I can't find the verse, but Samuel anointed him, and, and the, the spirit of the Lord came on Saul, and his heart was changed. Okay. And then at the end of the... At, 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 at the end, right, then the Spirit of God would come and go, and actually David had to play the harp to make him feel good, and when it was gone, Saul was crazy. When he said, yeah. But the reason for that was that Saul went in and, and, and part, did the, the office of the priest. I know. And he wasn't supposed to. And that's when, that's when the Spirit left Saul. See, he had the, he had the Spirit. Hmm. He went and did something he wasn't supposed to. And then the spirit left. left okay. But David feared that, though, with Psalm fifty-one, where he prayed, "Please don't take away the." That's right. The like, yeah, That's right. right. Exactly. But he did wrong too. Yes, he and, did. And now, because we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. But what's the difference? What's the difference the between Spirit. what's the difference between David and Saul? David, David had a heart for God. He, David had a repentant heart. No. Yeah, he had a heart. He said, "David is a man after mine own." heart. Heart. But you know that that's, one day as I was reading, I just wonder what what is it so what is it's so special with David that that's the great thing right there. He was yep. humble, he repented, he was right. he never uh, blamed anything any, anyone other than himself. He took the credit. For Such it. a great you know you you take that story even in the dispensation of grace it applies. Take that story of the account of David and Beersheba and 
then when Nathan, the prophet, comes to him and he tells him the story. And David said, I'm going to get that guy. Nathan says, it's you. And David didn't argue with him. He says, you're right, it is me. And then go read and Psalm 50. And then, and then go read Psalm 51. And that great Psalm. And that there's there it is. And, and you go read that. He understood even then, when he's under the law, he understands he needs God's grace. You wash me and I'll be clean. He doesn't say, I'll, tell me what to do, God, and I'll do it. You have to wash me. Please don't take your spirit from me. It's against you and you only have I sinned. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. He's murdered a guy. Another guy's yeah. died. Yeah. Uh, One place where that uh, I went to God gave me free choices, mm-hmm. and then he just told God, "You, <laughs> yeah, you choose." But that's an example of somebody that will sin in this time we're looking at in Hebrews, but but not not fall away. It won't be considered to fall away. Okay, they they will still have that. That God doesn't fix that issue that that fleshly desire until the new covenant, which is the kingdom time. Okay, so okay. Th- there you see the difference. Saul, who thought he was doing the right thing, hey, we got to get we got to get on with this battle. So Samuel's delayed. I, I'll go in and do it. I'm God's anointed yeah. anyhow. I'll go in. And, I'll yeah. go. I'll go in and do it. We can get things going. David had an affair and killed the guy. He, he didn't. See, he, I know he's not thinking. He can't believe he's thinking. Well, God wanted me to do it. Okay, but the re- the heart, the inward attitude, is mm-hmm. the issue. Is the issue. Okay. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, do thank you again for the evening. The the, the 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 great things we can learn, even from a book that's not to and about us, um, about the the attitude that you are looking for, and the attitude that every believer in any dispensation should have, a heart toward God, uh, toward you, toward your Son, and manifesting tr- the love that you have toward us. And manifesting that love out and understanding that you do desire not just that we would get saved but we come to the knowledge of the truth and again that's true in all dispensations that you would desire that people would mature that we would mature um, it's easier for us to talk about some future people that are going to that's going to happen but some of these lessons are true for us too that we need to mature we need to have our senses exercised to determine good and evil and to rest in who we are in christ and to rest in your scriptures we do thank you for your love, we thank you for your grace, and we thank you that we are saved from the wrath to come that we're studying about here in Hebrews. In your son's holy, precious name, amen. 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 Okay.